Hi, have you ever uh, watched videos where brokers are talking about um, no money down deals? Um, how you can buy a property with no money down uh, and things like that. Um, well, there's two ways really these type of deals are being done. One, um, you're trying to get these really under the market uh, value and then you're saying the equity in it because I've got such a good deal. Um, can you use the equity um, uh, in the property as my deposit? Now, sometimes these deals can happen if it's like an inherited property or there's a link or there's some sort of an arrangement you've done in the past. But very rarely in this market, you're now going to get such a good deal that you don't even have to put any money down. So that's number one. Number two is the video that I'm going to talk about. And that's actually no money down deal. Doesn't necessarily mean you don't have the money. It just means you don't have the cash. You've probably got the equity. And a lot of people refer to it as 100% financing. But that basically means you're putting a charge on something that you do own to buy somewhere else. So in this video, I'm going to talk about this topic, how it works, and how people are you know, falling short sometimes of getting the finance, and sometimes when it does work, how it can work. Take care, and I'll see you there. To all those property investors or wannabe developers, I'm getting more and more inquiries about um, putting charges on existing property to raise the deposit to buy an auction or buy somewhere else. Now often I get this and, and we, we do this all, all the time, you know, just trying to, sometimes we try to do this to reduce the loan to value, so to reduce the deposit amount. Um, and make the deal a, a better loan to value so they can get a better rate. Um, I'll give you an example. Let's say I've got a client who's got owns a property for £300,000 already. It could be a buy-to-let or it could be a residential property. Okay, And let's say they've, they've got a mortgage of only 50 k mortgage on it. Okay, um, But they don't have any cash. They don't have any money. But guess what? They want to get into property. They want to buy a property for £100,000. Okay? They often come to me and say, Piam. Um, I don't have cash, okay, um, what can I do <clears throat> to raise the money so I've got, I don't know, 25, 30, 35% deposit to buy a new property? Um, now, the challenge is they often come in as a remortgage. And I'll tell you what, a remortgage is ideal if you've got an onward purchase already. Because what one of the things that has changed in the last six months, I would say, is buy to let lenders to remortgage your property so you're going to say let's just assume it's a buy to let uh, not so much as a residential but the same rules apply really um i'm approaching to a lender and i'm saying look i've got a client he's got a property worth 300 he's got 50k on there can you give me 75 percent loan to value so i can take out all this money um because they want to invest in properties now before you could say look they'd like to go to auction so can we have the money please Okay, and the lender will say, okay, well, it's 75% loan to value, it's a remortgage, there you go. Now, um, because of a lot of the changes around money laundering rules, what lenders are doing is saying, um, yeah, that's no problem, you can remortgage for capital, for, for buying uh, properties, for investment properties, that's no problem. But we want the onward purchase details before we can either go to application or on offer. Okay, generally on application, that makes things difficult because if you're gonna, if you if you're not gonna buy it on the market, if you're not gonna buy it from an estate agent, and you're looking to go and buy a quirky property because you want to buy it in an auction and stuff like that, you don't have that option. It becomes difficult because essentially you don't have the property details at remortgage terms, uh, at remortgage times. So. Um, that falls through sometimes. So what a lot of people are doing, saying, okay, get me a bridging finance, let me place it on my buy-to-let, put a charge on my buy-to-let, so I don't physically need the money, they can use the equity that I've got left in the property, and then what we'll do is we'll do a cross charge between the what I've got and what I'm going to buy. So I've got, I don't know, X amount, let's say I've got 250,000 pounds equity in this property, plus uh, the new property that I'm going to buy, you know, make it work. And then often the loan to value drops, you know, maybe 50% loan to value, which means you get the best rate. Okay. So that's how a lot of these deals are being done. People are taking charges on whether it's residential. Now, some lenders will see it as a regulated uh, uh, deal because it's on the client's residential. 
Some lenders don't. Some lenders will say it's not residential because the funds are being used for a commercial investment property. Okay, so it just depends on the lender's uh, interpretation of uh, you know how how that fits. But um, you know the general rule is you put the charge in. There's a cross charge between the two properties, reduces the loan to value, and you can buy that property, do up the property, and then refinance. Once you've refinanced or sell, you can pay the loans off. There is one point so we've got that yeah we've got one point though i get calls on and we have this discussion and then we work out that they can't do it there's two reasons why reason number one you may think you've got a lot of equity but when it comes to these type of deals doing a second charge on that property okay generally bridging lenders will only do a go up to 65 percent loan to value gross that means you're going to need about 35 to 40 percent equity in the deal okay you've got to leave that in the deal so sometimes clients are already geared they're already geared at 55 percent loan to value by the time you've done the charge and the cost and the there's not much money in it yes it makes sense if you were doing a buy to let because they've got it in their mind 75 percent loan to value oh i've got plenty of equity but when you're looking to do those type of deals you need to have actually quite a lot of equity in those properties okay so that's one reason why a lot of those deals fall through people think they've got more equity than them what they've got the second is the existing lender maybe a historical buy to let lender that's no not around anymore or maybe a buy to let lender now or it might be a residential lender they may not allow a second charge to go behind their mortgage and often the first type of conversation I have is who's your existing lender do you know if they will give you consent for a second charge? What a second charge is is basically the, the, the bridging that's going to go behind your existing mortgage. Okay. Now I've had two uh, in the last week where they've approached their lenders and the lenders have said no. Uh, one of them is because he had a late payment in the last 12 months and because of that they didn't give him consent. Now it's actually going to run out next month so he should be able to get consent because it was I think it was Feb last year uh, the second they're no longer lending so this lender was sold off as part of the last credit crash and those lenders definitely don't want any changes they want you off their books you're costing them money so any changes they won't do they go well if you if that's what you want go somewhere else okay so those are the two reasons and the third reason is pretty much all the time I would say no, that's that's not being fair but quite a lot quite often is what they say their property is worth is not what it's worth um, especially when you're dealing with bridging lenders a lot of bridging lenders will go off the 180 day resale value not necessarily the open market value so often it's coming in lower than what they anticipate and because they don't have that level of equity in the deal the deal falls through they've gone and spent this money on evaluation and so forth so um, those are some of the challenges but when it works when you do have equity you could really really bring the rate down you can get a really good product um, flexible products that will take a charge on both and yeah because the loan to value has dropped considerably uh, yeah it really you know it can work um really well so it just you know have to discuss it with a broker um, and you know um, try to work formulate your plan um often you know you've got lenders you've got to take in your mind that the bridging uh, the onward bridging you know if it's if you think it's going to take six months obviously go for a longer period because you know you've got to sell the property or if you're going to refinance it, you've got to think about refinancing if you're selling it you've got to you've got to plan the sell process how long is it going to sell if you're going to sell it someone's going to take a mortgage on it how long is it going to take for them to get the mortgage and get the mortgage so it's not just about you doing it up putting it up on the market it's when will it actually be shifted anyway guys thank you so much again and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.